how to check or set the timing on the BMW Peugeot Citroen N14 engine as used in quite a number of BMW Citroen Peugeots and this Mini R56 model Cooper Clubman S. You might want to just check the timing or you may have done some repairs to the engine and suspect the timing is out or it might slip to cog or something. Uh, ordinarily, if you go through the manual, you have to strip off the front of the car, all these pipes, the engine mount, get access to the wheel lights, headlight out, uh, in order to um, remove the timing chain and slacken off the tensioner. That's if you're gonna change the timing chain cassette. Now this particular case, what happened was the camshaft seized, snaps the bolt that goes onto the, well, holds the sprocket onto the camshaft. And of course the timing was out. Uh, I've cleaned up the reason for the seizure of the camshaft, blocked all away, put a new stretch bolt in it, and now we just got to set the timing. This exhaust camshaft was already timed. Uh, by the book, there's some timing tools you've got to buy which uh, ensure these flaps are vertical. They say this writing's got to be uppermost. And the timing tool, I believe, fits over this little slot, these flaps here, and they've got to be vertical. So I think I'll put it in that position to start with, which is about that. So I've tightened up that bearing cap, and I notice already that it's no longer seized, which is good. Just rock it back and forth, see how that feels. Actually, that feels pretty good and is quite free moving, which is good. Once I've established we're in a safe timing position by checking that this camshaft has got the writing uppermost as well. So, how do we set the timing? Sure, we could go out and buy the special uh, tool necessary for this, uh, which is a whole bunch of uh, metal clamps that basically go over these flats you see here got a square shaped uh, part of the camshaft on both of them and a tool fits over the uh, vertical sides of these flats in a vertical manner 90 degrees to the top of the head on both sides the engine is turned over until you can get the timing pin into the timing hole which is underneath the engine and it is where I've temporarily, uh, right in the middle of the screen, popped in that little white thing just in front of the tissue through the hole. Uh, let me get a hand on it. So I found something that's just about the right size, which is this bit of an old uh, grinding wheel for a drill. It's probably about four mil. But what you want to do is get successively larger hex keys there's a little collection here i used and if you're close to the timing position you should be able to pop in one of these hex keys into the hole and feel when it drops further down so let's see that is onto the flywheel and then wiggle it around a little bit see it drops down into the hole and you can see whether that's uh, centralised or not just by feeling around for it. And uh, it's always easier to find the hole with a smaller one of these hex keys. And then work up to something as bigger and bigger. And finally this was about the biggest that I could get in that particular hole. And that locks the flywheel. Stops it from turning. Uh, once you've found that alignment position, then you can set the timing on the camshaft. Now, how do we do it without special tools? Well, first, why would you want to do it without a special tool? They're not that expensive, about £28 or something on eBay, I've seen them. Uh, I suspect those are dirt cheap, probably quite poor quality, probably made in China. Uh, would you uh, would you trust that they're made correctly? Uh, not uh, got too much slack in them? Hmm, not necessarily. Uh, if you look at this picture of how the timing tool is fitted and how it lines up on the flats, You'll see, we just get a flat edge. So this is a flat saw edge. You see at the top part of these flats actually line up exactly with each other. 
in the proper timing position and you can very accurately will uh, see where they timed up by let's just move that back a little bit by balancing just one side on the flat wiggle it up and down a little bit to make sure you can feel when it's actually on the flat and then slide the other side over to see if it lines up with the other flat if it doesn't turn the camshaft slightly if it does then you're in exact alignment and then you can do the same thing on the other side move the blade so it's not touching the other camshaft and then check this one is flat just by rocking it back and forwards left and right a little bit till you know it's flat on that uh, part of the camshaft and then see if it lines up with the other camshaft when it does you're exactly aligned and uh, you've aligned the cams without needing a special tool and you might find that you need to move the position of the cams in case you want to get a 27 mil spanner so this is not how to do it without any tools just without the special tools so it's useful to have a 27 mil spanner for the uh, mini oil filter anyhow and uh, probably for the other jobs and 27 mil is exactly what fits onto that hex part of each camshaft lathe to turn it round. So just turn it until those flats line up. And then the next job is to, of course, tighten the bolt. So this camshaft bolt needs to be tightened to 20 Newton meters. And then that's the stage one. Stage two is then to tighten it a further 180 degrees. And of course, due to the space, you have to do it two lots of 90 degrees. Not a lot of space in there. Um, so to get a 20 Newton meters, I had to use my very small torque wrench. It's very accurate this one. See my other review on this uh, hand diff torque wrench. And uh, yeah, there's not a lot of space before you get to the engine mount. Um, save you having to take that off. You want a fairly short socket. Socket you need, there's an E14, a star type of connection and this torque wrench is a quarter inch drive socket's a half inch so actually what i did is i took one of my other sockets that i'm not using one of these ones chop the end off it where's the uh oh, that's the bit that's left there we go chop the end off it actually grind it down the sides made this little thing which is a nice little quarter inch to 3h drive adapter so I can now pop that over the end of the torque wrench like so and then I can pop that in the socket and there's our converter. However, it is wise to jam it on with a little bit of tissue, stop it falling off and falling down the engine. Makes that a little bit tighter and there we go and you can see quite a lot more space for getting our socket in there. And you'll notice I've got these mole grips on each camshaft just to hold them in position. Uh, it's these sort of things, uh, adjustable mole grips. Um, gives you a little bit more um, fine adjustment and they're wedged against the side of the cylinder head. When we have the flats perfectly lining up with each other, the trick then is to First of all, do our 20 Newton meters. Don't really want to uh, turn over the engine. And so we need to balance our uh, forces, our tightening forces, between the spanner we're holding and our torque wrench until we get that 20 Newton meters. Which ensures we don't actually turn over the engine or move the sprocket on the cam. Once we've done that, check our timing again, which is good. Yep, and then we can do our 180. And for that, I'm going to need my half inch torque wrench. And then if you get the right length of 3H drive extension bar, there's our socket. And the extension bar comes to about there got a flexi joint on it here and off to our half inch drive socket all you've got to do is loosen off these bolts and just leave this up slightly just about enough room then 
that saves a lot of time dismantling as well. So let's just take out the slack and work out where our 90 degree position is going to end. So that's with the torque wrench virtually horizontal. So the vertical is maybe one more notch about there. And we need something wedged in. Stop that moving. Let's see what we've got. Right. You see, I've changed the uh, wrenches so that they're resting against a part of the cylinder, in particular this one. Hopefully, that will help it to not turn. And uh, likewise, try and put the same amount of pressure on our spanner. And let's try and do the 90. That's about right. And another 90. And after that tightening, just check that we're still aligned, which we are. Check it both ways around. Yep, yeah, perfectly aligned. So hopefully that's it, job done. And then reassemble. And there we are, all back together again and running okay. Did have a little bit of noise, but it turned out to be this uh, vacuum pump which is a very common source of a little knocking noise from the engine. Uh, took it off, a couple of bolts, 8 mil bolts, underneath there, uh, around there, and then you'll wiggle that off. A couple of other videos on YouTube on that. Relatively easy to get off. Uh, stripped it down, cleaned it up, just checked it was working okay. Took these bolts off here, dismantled it, centralised their housing, Seemed to help it, and uh, before I reassembled everything, squared it some oil on a little flexible joint where it connects to the camshaft, and uh, knocked down the little tab washer that's on the end of it. You'll see it when you take it apart, and no noises now, and uh, seems to be running okay. Thanks for watching, bye.